Earlier this month, the footballer uh, Mark McCammon was awarded more than £68,000 after an employment tribunal found that he had been unfairly dismissed in an act of racial victimisation by Gillingham Football Club. The 34-year-old striker was sacked by the club last year after an incident during which he claimed he was being discriminated against because he was black. Under the Race Relations Act, race victimisation is when a person is treated less favourably than others in the same circumstances because they've complained about racial discrimination or supported someone else who has. The tribunal found that Mark McCammon had been unfairly dismissed, that a series of unauthorised deductions had been made by the club from his wages and that because it explicitly said in a letter from the chairman, Paul Scally, that his allegations of racism against the manager were one of the reasons for his dismissal, that he had been racially victimised. The chairman of Gillingham Football Club, Paul Scally, has told this programme that he's hugely disappointed in the ruling, but Paul Scally said he was unable to talk to us while the appeal is ongoing. Although he did tell us that in the history of Gillingham Football Club, over 87 black players have been employed and no one has ever made an allegation of racism against them before. I've been speaking to Mark McCammon before we went on air and I asked him how things were when he first signed for Gillingham. Yeah, it was um, a new challenge for me. Um, I got promoted with um, Doncaster Rovers into the Championship and, you know, there was a new challenge for me in League, one, in league 2 to um, get promoted with um, Gillingham and they put it forward to me, put a good offer on the table and uh, I decided to join. And, and and things went well? Yeah, things went well until um, my wages, um, unfortunately, got deducted in um, 2010. What um, happened? Yeah, well, basically, um, we got relegated from uh, League Two after getting promoted the previous season. And uh, my wages just got deducted when it's not, it wasn't in my contract. And there was uh, another player called um, Alan Julian who had a similar contract to mine. And his wages got deducted, but he got his wages back. But unfortunately, I didn't get mine back. And I couldn't understand the reason why. Um, I addressed it with Mr Scully. And he said it should have been in my contract when I, I said now to him... this is Paul Scally you're talking about, yeah, who's, this, who's this, the chairman of Gillingham. Yeah, this is the chairman of Gillingham. And uh, I put it forward to him. And, you know, he just continuously did that to my wages throughout the, throughout the rest of the year. But w- would you not expect um, a, a deduction in wages if the club had been demoted? Exactly, yeah. If I had a promotion clause in my contract um, of 15%, um, then fair enough... You know, um, my wages would have gone up when we got promoted from League Two. But getting demoted and, well, the deal was from the start that my wages remained the same throughout the whole three years of a contract. So, you know, I just didn't understand why, you know, Mrs. Scully would do something like that. What kind of money were you on? I was on um, two and a half grand a week for the whole three years. And that was um, a set rate that I was, you know, supposed to be on for the three years. It's good money, isn't it? Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> it was decent. It was nice for me at, at that time. So that's when stuff started to deteriorate, Mark. I got suspended and my contract was terminated in the end. And this, of course, is is at the heart of your dispute with the club. Why you were terminated, uh, why you were suspended and then why your, your contract um, was terminated. Yeah, exactly. It was a build-up of uh, things that started to happen from when my wages were deduct- deducted. And, you know, it's a series of things and, you know, it was beyond me. It just, I started to get treated differently to everyone else. And um, I was asking the question why I was being treated differently to everyone else. And um, up to this day, I've had no answers. Why do you think you were treated differently? Well, um, maybe because of the colour of my skin. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe because of the wages I was on as well. And I just couldn't understand it. It just, I've never, it's never happened to me in my football career before. Obviously, Mark, uh, Gillingham Football Club vehemently deny uh, allegations of a of a racist nature. They 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 vehemently deny it. And I know, having read the the tribunal, you brought this to an employment tribunal uh, transcript. They point out that they've employed many black players over the years. Yeah, well, they may have um, had employed many black players over the years, but in a judgment, if you read it, um, I won my case on the grounds of race victimisation. Um, it's a way my contract was terminated. It was in a race this victimisation uh, way. So that's in um, tr- tribunal, you, you could read that. It's out there now and um, you know, that's how it that's how it went. And, and and what the tribunal said was that the club wrote to you when they were terminating your contract and they essentially said that um, one of the reasons why your contract was terminated 
was because you'd made a very serious allegation against members of the club in terms of racism. Yeah. And, and and they're not allowed to do that. They're not allowed to use the fact that you complain about racism as one of the factors of sacking you. Exactly, yeah. It's just um, I found it very perplexing. And they rather terminate the contract for it. And I just, that's beyond me. I just don't understand how, how that works. How did you feel when you read that letter and you read that one of the reasons why you were being sacked is because you'd complained about racism? I was, I was absolutely shocked. And I went to see, seek my own independent advice and they told me, you know, this is it's there in black and white, written on a um, termination contract that they terminated my contract because it was of, uh, I made allegations of racism towards a football club without having an investigation. The tribunal has not actually said the specific allegations that you're making against the club, which the club vehemently deny. The tribunal has not ruled upon. The, the tribunal has ruled upon the technicality of how they sacked you, right? Yeah, exactly. But it was very, very difficult for me at that time because so many things were happening to me. Is it not possible, Mark, that what actually happened here was that it was a club not getting on with the player, uh, you not getting on with the club, and that this was nothing to do with racism? No, I will disagree. Um, basically, you know what you know what your detractors yeah. are going to say, right? Can I, I can I say it out loud so they give you a chance to respond to it? You, your your detractors are going to say you use the colour of your skin, yeah, uh, to, to 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 form an argument against the club, and they've employed many black players, and this was nothing to do with racism. It was, well, you can say that we like, but I was in the position. And the way I was treated wasn't equally and as fairly as everyone else. And, you know, that's the minimum requirement that any footballer would like, you know. Um, it's a professional football club. It's, you know, it's something called equality. And the way I was being treated, it wasn't at that um, standard, I'm afraid. What are your plans for the future, Mark? Yeah, I just want to um, continue um, playing football. I'm at Lincoln City Football Club at the moment. Um, I'm enjoying it. It's just nice to get back on the football pitch and be associated with, um, you know, nice, reasonable people. And, uh, you know, just get on, with that, get on with it and just enjoy my football. OK. Well, Mark, thank you so much for talking to us this morning, sir. Thank you.